Today is the Feast of All Saints, and so the reading comes from Matthew chapter 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the reading. A new company now insures my car. I haven't made many claims, so I don't think it's my fault or my bad driving that's brought on the change. It's probably just diocesan and policy. Along with a new fridge magnet to celebrate, I've also received a document for the glove box entitled Motor Fleet Claims Glove Box Guide. The guide gives some funny instructions. After your accident, ensure your safety. Comply with police directions. Do not admit fault. I think that's very important to insurers. Use your smartphone to record the other person's details. Look, I've only got an old Nokia. Take pictures of the damage from many different angles. It's a real blueprint for maximum insurance company comfort. The Beatitudes that we hear in today's gospel are not so different. They record in a sort of blueprint style how things work in the kingdom of heaven. Frankly, the list is a bit of a surprise. There's a lot of going backward and forward about who and what is included and who is not. The most surprising thing is that the list of those who will be invited into the kingdom is made up mainly of disappointed and sad people. The poor in spirit, peacemakers, mourners, Meek people, is that a nice way of saying weak people? The pure in heart, the merciful, those who are reviled and persecuted. This is not a blueprint for economic success stories, or one man band leaders, for the Trumps of the world, or frankly, for people like you or me. This is not a blueprint for winners. Jesus seems determined to make those who are at the end of their tether those who don't really belong, those who don't have many resources, those who've lost their purpose and direction. These are the ones he seems determined to call blessed. Strange, isn't it? How could Jesus get it so wrong? Then we remember the last 32 weeks since we first started to understand that we were about to all face a global pandemic that would shut, touch and shut down and limit just about all the things we think are the sources of our happiness. No coffee shops here in Ballarat, no coffee shops. No dining out, no visiting friends, no calling in on elderly relatives, no helping a sister or sister-in-law with their new baby. Our lives contracted so quickly that most of us had no idea what was going on. No office gossip or cakes for birthdays, no tennis or AFL, except on TV, no singing with others. And then days and weeks and months of being alone and anxious and frightened to get a cough or a sore throat with an inexpressible obsession with numbers issued from the chief medical officer. In the midst of the pandemic, the Beatitudes have come into their own again, just as they always do when we're brought to the edge of our own self-satisfied, in control lives. So what would Jesus tell us if we followed him to the top of Mount Warren Heap and he asked to sit down and listen for a change? 
blessed are the bored. They have a chance to remember what is truly important. Blessed are the ones who watch out for the old bloke next door, even though he's a grizzler, because sometimes we need someone to love us freely too. Blessed are those who are petrified about economic loss. They've been forced to remember that their real treasures are the people who love them, no matter what payroll increment they enjoy. Blessed are the ones who've borne the agony of unwanted death. For they know about unambiguous love and about desperately searching and glimpsing a tiny lid of hope in the midst of darkness. Blessed are the cleaners at the hospital who go to work because they don't have economic choices, because they enjoy their workmates, because they know their risk is somebody else's safety. Blessed are the mums who are desperate about homeschooling. For they discover that it's not algebra or perfect grammar that really educates our kids, but the depth of exhausting and enduring love that we show them. Blessed is the Premier, even if we can't bear his politics, because day after day he stands up in a news briefing, faces his critics and the consequences of bad decisions, and doesn't try to hide behind political smartness for a change. Oh yes, and all these things, Jesus tells us, are reminders and pointers and markers of the kingdom of heaven. How blessed we have been. How blessed we are. Today is All Saints Day, when we remember all the wonderful people who've gone before us, listening to Jesus and finding in his words strength to endure the unendurable and hope when all around seems lost. We rejoice in the reality that we share with them in the life of the kingdom, a kingdom which is already within us, which also waits for fulfilment. And so sometimes we're even bold enough to treat the saints, the great ones who've gone before us, as our family and our friends, and ask them to pray for us and with us, that we might find beatitude, blessing, in the presence of Jesus in our own time and place. What a great day to start back at Face to Face Church. Thanks be to God. Let me pray. Eternal God, neither death nor life can separate us from your love. Grant that we may serve you faithfully here on earth and in heaven rejoice with all your saints who ceaselessly proclaim your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May God give you grace to follow all the saints in faith and hope and love and to know the fruit of God's Spirit in your lives and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love today and always. Amen.